This video continues directly from the previous one looking at the childhood clip and actually something I didn't mention at the end of the childhood clip if we're thinking about the interviewer's language uh, we have here the interviewer saying so it's poured into books but you give this to the rest of us it's great so that use of positive language is encouraging JK Rowling uh, building up that sort of rapport or relationship with her so that she'll want to keep sharing her information and giving us the details as an adult audience that we want to hear about. All right, on to the plotting Potter. So that's the second clip in the series. In this clip, if you look at J.K. Rowling's body language, it's very different from the previous clip. In the previous clip, she was talking about this very sort of somber or serious subject about her childhood, which she didn't massively enjoy. And she was sitting very still. She had hunched shoulders. Um, she wasn't very sort of mobile or very involved. She looked very sort of downbeat, quite downcast, a bit depressed almost. Here she's a lot more animated, but not necessarily in a overly good way. She's a bit more excited because she's talking about something she's more comfortable with. She's talking about the Harry Potter books rather than an uncomfortable childhood. But she's a bit nervous that people are going to see the notes. So she has to keep holding her hands over it, she keeps worrying, she has a worried facial expression because she's concerned people are going to see it. We see that in this line where she's interrupting the interviewer. The interviewer is sort of trying to reassure her, saying, all right, but without being able to sort of give stuff away, uh, J.K. Rowling's going, oh, I've got to hide that. So she's clearly worried about it. But the interviewer again interrupts her. Got quite a few interruptions going on because the interviewer is trying to reassure her. Remember, that's part of the question. How does the interviewer prompt and encourage her? So the interviewer says, no, no one can read that from that far away, but tell us what each column is exactly. So she's sort of distracting her. We see a filler here, perhaps because J.K. Rowling is still a bit nervous about people seeing what's in her notes, which is for her upcoming book. But she starts to explain it in a bit of detail. Um, if we think about the subjects and how they're appropriate for adults. Then she's going into a lot of details sort of how she structures and plans for books. To a child, this may not be quite as interesting. So an adult might be interested in the story behind the books and how they came to be, but a child's more interested in the actual story and talking about the characters. So again, subject-wise, she's just talking about a sort of planning table. Children aren't that interested in planning, not in the same way that adults might be watching this. I think that's more or less the majority of things you can say about this clip. It's actually quite a short clip. So we'll go straight on to writing on welfare. This is the last of the three 60 minutes clips. So 60 minutes is obviously a 60 minute program. And these are just three short clips of the interview from that. This one begins slightly differently to the other ones. If we look, J.K. Rowling's not really giving a lot away. With the interviewer saying, so you used to come here? Yeah. To this cafe mm -hmm. and write yes. J.K. Rowling, she's been quite short, quick answers. It's like she perhaps wants to get through these questions quite quickly, perhaps because she's nervous about what's coming up. So she's really not giving very much away single word answers, which means the interviewer has to prompt and encourage her in a different way. Let's just skip back a second. In the earlier interview, the interviewer was making statements which J.K. Rowling was expanding on. So, for example, and how cruel the other kids can be. It's not a question, it's a statement. But it allows J.K. Rowling to expand on it and go into detail. Same here. You are an unhappy child. That's a statement, not a question. J.K. Rowling explains in detail, um, sort of expanding on that point. So this strategy is working for the interviewer here. However, when we get to the writing on welfare, the interviewer is trying to use that strategy. So you used to come here to this cafe, but she's not really getting much out of J.K. Rowling. So then she tries a question and write. The thing with this question it's a, is it's a closed question. It's a question you can answer with a yes or no answer. And J.K. Rowling does that. She just says yes. So she's not really giving the information that the interviewer wants to get out of her for the adult audience. So the interviewer needs to try a different tactic. She now asks two open questions. So just in case one wasn't enough, she asks two. Now, why would you come here? What was the point? This question or these questions can't be answered with a one word answer. 
So she's got to give more detail. She's prompted to encourage J.K. Rowling to give further detail. So J.K. Rowling talks about the reasons why she was there. And then we have the interviewer saying you got only two cups of coffee because you really couldn't afford. And the interviewer says, you're on welfare. How do you get that low? If you listen to the interviewer's accent, you'll spot that she has an American accent. Thinking about the cultural differences between the United Kingdom and America, they have quite a different view on welfare. Being on welfare is very much looked down upon in America. Um, it's almost as in you're not working hard enough, it's your own fault, it's kind of a laziness thing. Whereas in this country, in the UK, we have a slightly more positive view of a welfare system and we sort of see it as a helping hand, it's a way to help people when they're a bit down on their luck and we just need to get back on their feet in a way. So the way this comes across from this interview and the way she phrases it, it's almost a bit judgmental. Look at that word low, how did you get that low? So she's suggesting you, you were very low, you're in a low position. And because she's being quite judgmental, that potentially is making JK Rowling feel a bit nervous, a bit defensive. So she has to sort of justify herself. Early on, she's saying, I was a bit broke at the time, to sort of justify that. Um, and then she's saying, how she got that low? Well, in a nutshell, my marriage had split up. I'd been living in Portugal, working in Portugal, and when I came back to Britain, I had nowhere to live. So she's explaining the reason she was in this situation. She's saying, you know, look, it's not my fault, it just, things didn't go that well. So that's perhaps an instance where the interviewer is not prompting and encouraging her as well as she perhaps could have done because it makes J.K. Rowling defensive. But at least it does get more of an answer out of her than we got here. So those are just some of the points you can make about the first three clips for the adult audience for 60 Minutes interview.